It's been a while since I last uploaded a video, and this is partly because I've been moving house, which has been delightfully stressful, but also because I've been working on my most ambitious LEGO project ever. Back in May, for some ridiculous reason, I decided that I would build the map of Westeros, with strong influences from the titles of HBO's Game of Thrones. It seemed like an easy enough idea. I bought the world map to use as a sort of baseline. Originally I was just going to have an outline of Westeros, but then I thought, do you know what, if I'm going to do this, let's go all out. One of the reasons that it's taken so long is that I've just been sort of building as I go and experimenting and just seeing what felt right rather than planning in advance. It was a great way to get myself chill and zen, given the stress of moving and unpacking everything. And whilst I was able to use a lot of the pieces that I already had, I also had to make several orders on Bricklink. So I was working to a budget and using all the spare minutes I had. That's one of the reasons it's taken me months. The other is, it is huge. Once I'd traced the outline of the map, I got to work on the terrain and the buildings. Similarly to the titles of Game of Thrones, the buildings and castles aren't to scale, otherwise they'd essentially just be dots. I was influenced by the stylized versions of the buildings and the titles, but also how they appear in the show itself, as well as descriptions in the books. It's kind of a mishmash. I didn't want it to be 100% accurate in any particular direction, I just wanted it to be recognisable. So let's take a tour. We'll start from the top down. As you can see, this is kind of based on how the world looks at the beginning of Season 8. Part of the wall, i.e. East Watch, has been destroyed. So the wall is partially gone and we've got some trans light blue tiles to represent the White Walkers making their way down. Our first castle is Castle Black. This is a really basic one. It's made up of eight pieces, but I didn't want to put too much into it for risk of making the wall look a lot smaller than it should be. I was therefore very limited with what I could use. Really basic techniques, I've certainly not broken my back doing it. Further down we have the last hearth. A similar story here, not that many pieces and no particularly innovative techniques. We see it in the titles for season 8, we see it very briefly in the show itself and I didn't really have that much to work with so I went for a really basic design. I think it works for what it is. A little bit further down we have the dread fort. I purely used pieces that I already had for this design. It's the home of the Boltons who are rather nasty. And in the titles of the show, it's got lots of pointed edges, which I've tried to reflect here with loads of slope pieces. The whole thing is brown. Whilst there's a lot of gray throughout this, I've tried not to make everything gray, so I've tried to vary it up a little bit. And I think the kind of rusted brown look kind of works here. Or at least I think so. Winterfell is the first major build we come across, and it's the first build that I actually started um, when I began this project. I've based this a bit on the titles, but mostly on how it appears physically in the show itself. There are lots of round buildings, so I've used a lot of cylinder pieces. I've tried to mix them up a bit and use a few different types of round pieces. So we've got some cylinders, some studs, some dish plates. And then the God's Wood is represented with this really simple tree build. I'm really glad I was able to add that because it adds a splash of colour that was desperately needed. And Winterfell as a whole is definitely one of the builds that I'm most happy with. The Twins was a really simple affair to put together. It's perfectly symmetrical and is based strongly both on how it appears in the titles um, and also some descriptions in the books as well. You've got the two longer towers on either side and then you've got a central um, kind of tower sticking up. There are obviously far more arches in the bridge, but I used the smallest Lego arch pieces I could find, and I think they work here. As a side note, obviously there should really be a river running through this, but the introduction of rivers throughout the map would have really confused the whole build. And with the scale that it was, I don't think it really would have worked having rivers, like a stud wide. Pike was one of the builds that um, one of my friends in particular was very excited about. I almost felt like I was being commissioned to make it. A relatively simple idea with the bridges. It was really hard to make these rope bridges work at this scale, but I think what I went for in the end was a fair compromise. This is one of the builds that looks really awesome on the map itself. I just love how they jut out of the ocean. The Eerie was one of the builds that I was most excited about. It's such an iconic looking building and I really wanted to get it right. It was tempting to just have, you know, three different shaped spheres, but I wanted to try and vary it up a bit and have a couple of little towers sticking out. Before I even started on the Eerie itself, I put together a little rock face for it to stick out on top on. And I'm pretty happy with how it's turned out. It's quite recognizable. I experimented with a few different kinds of pieces, but I think I think what I settled on works pretty well. River Run is a very simple build. I've got a blue circular plate at the bottom to kind of represent the water around it. It's definitely one of the more traditional castle builds. It's perfectly symmetrical. We've got an arch on either side and four pointy pieces which do all the work for me really in making this look like a castle. This is definitely one of the little builds that didn't take me very long to do. 
it was just a kind of five minute job and I didn't want to spend too much time on every single build for risk of overcrowding the map and making it both too difficult to pick places out and also too heavy to lift. Harren Howl's next. Again, this is one of the smaller builds. I'm a little bit undecided on how it's come out, but I wanted to kind of vary up some of the piece usage. They're meant to look like melted ruins, so I did my best to make it kind of asymmetrical and have lots of different levels. It's mostly influenced by the title sequence and I'm relatively happy with it. Dragonstone was a really interesting one to build. As far as I'm aware, Dragonstone looks drastically different in the title sequence to how it looks in the show itself. This is because the render in the title sequence was first introduced around season two and we didn't really see the kind of proper exterior of the castle until I'd say around season seven. So I kind of had some freedom to play around with it. I wanted the build to be black to vary up the colors, um, but also reflect um, Drogon, which is Danny's main dragon. It is very, very loosely built in the shape of a sort of dragon with lots of spikes leading up through the middle um, and into a tail at the end. Despite it being a really small build, I've used a lot of clip pieces and different techniques to bring out a lot of different levels. And I hope that there's a sufficient amount of detail there for it to be recognizable. I had a lot of fun with Casterly Rock. And this is because it only appears in the show once, never appears in the titles. And to be honest, I just swept aside everything from the show here and went purely by the source material of the books and how it's described in companion pieces like uh, World of Ice and Fire. So it's on top of a huge cliff face. This is actually the tallest castle out of all of, um, of, of the builds on this map. And according to descriptions, the cliff itself um, kind of takes the shape of uh, the front of a lion. So I wanted to play with that, but also get the balance right. I wanted it to kind of resemble something that looks close to a lion without being kind of cartoonish. It's one of those things where, unless you're told, you might not notice it immediately. So I hope I got the right balance there. All of the buildings on top are pearl gold, uh, which is meant to represent all of the gold that's been extracted from this cliff face. It's a lot of the reason why the Lannisters have acquired such um, huge wealth to begin with. And it looks pretty imposing. Alongside Winterfell and the build we have coming up, I'd say it's one of the um, three big builds. So let's move on to the biggest one. I wanted King's Landing to be a centerpiece. It is of course the capital of Westeros, and it is both one of the first builds I started, and it was one I was tinkering away at throughout the entire process, um, to the point where I'm pretty sure that the last things I added uh, were to this very build. So of course we've got the Red Keep, which is this great big uh, golden citadel. I've tried to match a lot of the towers to how it looks in the show and the titles, and played around with a lot of different kind of pieces um, just to give it some variety. The city itself is kind of a mishmash of slope pieces. I just wanted it to look like a mess of cobbled together buildings that have been hastily built by peasants. Uh, in order to be close to the king. As you can see, of course, there's this great big green splatter piece. It was designed to kind of represent goo. Um, I'm pretty sure it was introduced with the hidden side range, but I've used it here to represent uh, the wildfire explosion that comes out of the Sept of Baelor. And then we have these upside down ice skating pieces, which were the last things I added to this build. And they're meant to represent the scorpions that are these huge crossbows that are fired at the dragons. So the whole thing is huge and really well fortified. And with all the gold in the build, it really draws the eye, which is exactly what I wanted. I think this is the build that I am most happy with. And I hope that you like it too. From the biggest build to one of the smallest, uh, Storm's End, I don't believe actually featured in the show itself. So I've gone from how it's described in the books. We just have a single tower coming out from a very basic kind of circular base. And the reason that this build is so small is because it's right next to King's Landing. Um, and of course I wanted a lot more space to be dedicated to the capital over something that doesn't really appear in the show. As far as I'm concerned, it's still important enough to include in the map itself because it's the house of the Baratheons and that is such a prominent family throughout the show that it seemed only right to include. As with Casterly Rock, um, Highgarden appears physically in the show but never in the titles and what we were shown in the show was a relatively basic looking castle, kind of nondescript. So like with Castle of Rock, um, I had a lot of fun kind of putting together something based purely on descriptions from the books. High Garden is of course famous for its gardens. Um, it's meant to have a hedge maze surrounding the whole thing, which is a really cool idea. Um, I've represented that very simply with just a lot of these uh, green flower pieces. This is kind of the closest thing to a, a proper fairy tale castle that I think you'll be able to see on this map. 
I'm really happy in particular with how the tops of the towers look. With the green base and the dark blue roofs, it's, it's nice and colourful. And the build itself, I'm, I'm actually really happy with how that came together. I, I had a lot of fun playing around with different techniques to get the shape just right. Old Town is another fairly simple build. I couldn't not include it, of course. You've got the huge white spire and a tiny little candle flame to represent the, the huge flame that's... Uh, meant to be coming out of the top there. Not much else to say really. Weirdly it took me a lot longer than it should have to get the shape right because I wanted it to match um, the coastline because it is right up against the edge of the map. But, but like I say, um, like with a few builds, it's simple but it does the job. Finally, um, at the very south and to the very east, we have Sunspear in Dawn. I knew from the beginning that I wanted to incorporate a, uh, a snake to this build. Just as it appears in the title, you just have this snake circling the main tower. And this was a lot trickier than I initially thought it was gonna be. In the end, I had a really simple clip piece and just positioned the snake so it looked like it was going up this pole. One of my favorite things about this build is the textured roofs. And there's also a splash of green in the middle um, and a transparent blue stud in the center of that um, to represent the water gardens. I had a lot of fun playing around with terrain. The whole map kind of goes up and down on different levels. And I paid close attention to where all of the main forests uh, and woods were meant to be, which are represented by um, simple green flower pieces. Also included throughout the map um, are these really neat little ship builds. I wanted something that was obviously recognizably a ship, but one that I could use out of a lot of existing pieces that I already had. And given that I only really had the space to make them two studs wide. I'm really happy with how I managed the shaping of them. And they just add a lot of life to the ocean around the map, just so it doesn't become kind of too monotonous. Finally, just to round off the map, we have this neat dragon build. Because there's quite a bit of space in the center of the map, as a lot of the um, castles around the edges of the coast, I wanted something to fill that space and the dragon worked perfectly. So yeah, this is this massive project I've put together and I really hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think and if there's anything that I could have done to maybe uh, improve it. I don't think I'll be doing anything drastic because you know, it's, this has been months in the making and I'm not entirely sure what to do with it from here. Originally I was gonna be hanging it up on the wall but it's very heavy and I'm worried that I might actually break my wall. Or worse still, the map will fall off and just break into a thousand billion pieces. Eh, I'll let you know how I get on with that. I hope you enjoyed this video. There will be more in the way now that I'm getting a bit more settled. So until then, um, take care and I'll see you soon.